Hey, first things first, let me get the sample sheet up there. First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird and my company is Crystal Edge Technology Screens. Ugh. Right off from the back, all the way off. All right, there we go. All right, so my company makes the Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Technology and we also make the new 17 2021s that are coming out soon. Now, what I want to talk to you about in this video is the fact that you have people that would try to perceive that um, contrast is, it, well, black screens just are not good for anything. They're not good for home theater setups. They're not good for outdoor projection. They're not good for anything. But as you can see in my demonstrations, which we have, we don't talk it, we back it up 100%. I have demonstrations of my technology outside versus black and white screens. I have my technology, actually outside versus white screens, gray screens. We've done demonstrations in certified screens. And apparently, I guess they might have missed the 17s because the 17s are freaking insane. They've done 11 certified screens with no problem whatsoever. And not only that, the 17 black is beyond outstanding. That screen produced an insane white level while maintaining a contrast level. And keep in mind, the screen is three times darker than a 12. So, yes, black screens, contrast levels, and you have to have contrast levels are very important for a projection setup, a home theater setup. If that wasn't the case, they wouldn't even bother selling you projectors with such high contrast ratings. You wouldn't even talk about it. Why well, talk about something that you would never utilize or Keep in mind, it's not an important for the projector to be to produce contrast, and it is. That's why you see projectors with contrast ratings. People want those black levels. You have to have those black levels in order to add detail to a movie. So, if that wasn't the case, that means you could watch Batman off of a white screen, and you would have no problems whatsoever. So, let me show you something here. Now, just because you don't see... Um, uh, black screens in movie theaters. Some people say, well, you know, it's not needed because you don't see black screen in movie theaters. You don't see dark gray screens. I have never seen a black diamond, a dark star nine, or any of the darker screens that they develop in a movie theater. Name one time you've ever walked into a movie theater and saw a black diamond sitting up there, laying up against the screen, a dark gray screen. Have you ever seen one? No, you haven't. Because they haven't learned to utilize black technology or darker gray screens. And I think before you talk and run your mouth, you should know the history of what you do before you actually start speaking. Because keep in mind that when things all started off, there was no such thing as gray screens. There were no such thing as silver screens or silver screens came later on. Majority of most screens in the silent era were actually all screens in the silent era were white. And then silver screens came out. They were the big thing. You know, people saw better color and so forth. And then things just went on from there. I don't think that uh, technology and movie theater screens have changed at all quite so all. If you see how far silver screens go back, they go back quite a bit. But you have to have the contrast level. If that wasn't the case, then, you know, when, when Screen Innovation first developed the black flag or the um, black diamond, which is their black flag, and they came out there and did that demonstration where they were moving that sample sheet around and that white screen, and you just saw all the colors just popping off that screen, that's what made them the company that they are. If you look at um, elite screens, elite screens in their category, they start off with the cheaper screens, which are the white screens. They start off with the cinema gray, which is a little more slight gray screen. Then they move on to the cinema gray, which is a little darker. Price goes up. And then they end with the top screen in their category, which is the Dark Star 9, which is a very dark gray screen. All right. Even daylight screens. Daylight screens used to design a lot of gray screens and white screens and then they moved over to a very darker screen so that's what i'm trying to say that you know if you're going to be hitting in the category saying that well this is why i um black screen's not good for home theater keep in mind you had a screen called hd cinema black so when people go out and make statements like that they really need to do their homework first and need to study the history of what they do. They need to basically be able to back it up as they're speaking it. Now, if I tell you that, hey, look, everybody outside, majority of those people, all people outside are using white screens. 
and I were to come out and say, look, we got a black screen that can produce better contrast, amazing white levels, image is not going to come out dark, it's going to look incredible. They're not going to believe me on just me just saying it. I have to back it up. That's why I have multiple demonstrations of black screens being displayed outside because you got to be able to back it up. You just can't say that. Now, why I believe that gray screens, and keep in mind, we do have a gray screen. We have one called the black silver. Our black silver is not like any other black screen. It's, I'm sorry, gray screen. It has the ability to pour contrast level on a gray surface. Same thing like the platinum eclipse. They got the ability to pull a dark gray screen, pull higher white levels, and pull a black level that's even darker than trying to use everyday dark primer. There's a difference between the two. So when you make a statement like that, you have to be able to back it up. So I've requested multiple times from people, before we even got into the field of development of gray screen paint, I've requested multiple times of saying, I would love to see multiple gray screens lined together. I would like to see a star field demonstration. It was never done. So that's why we developed the black silver. Black silver can do a star field demonstration and I can put four or five sample sheets certified, not screen paint, certified sample sheets against a black silver and it will produce a better contrast level, which I will happily show you today. So we're gonna do a bit of a paint on demonstration and show you why contrast levels are very important. Now, the paint, the reason why I'm showing you this right here, this is another fellow for those of you who wanna go into a frenzy real quick. No, it has nothing to do with you know who. This is another fellow to show you that the black and white mixture has been around forever. I remember what, if you don't remember, the projector is called the Galaxy DG737, 747s, and 757s. You weren't old enough to remember. Well, actually, not old enough. We weren't in that era when projection screens were using those particular projectors. These were the huge rage in projectors that came over from China. They're around 200 bucks. Picture quality wasn't all that great. But it was better than paying four or five and six and seven hundred dollars for a projector, which you pay for projectors now on the cheap. You wouldn't, you wasn't getting them for that price. I paid for a BenQ MS500 projector. It was six hundred by eight hundred res, and it cost me five hundred dollars. Okay, so at that particular time, projectors were quite expensive. So you had to get what you can get. And on YouTube, it was a rage where everybody was setting these big screen projectors and hooking up their Xbox 360s and watching movies. But everybody was in the dark when they were doing these demonstrations. So. The only two screens you had to go with was a screen called Grey Wolf. Black Diamond did not exist. I guess they were in development stage. There was no such thing as a Dark Star 9. And there were no other gray screen paints out there besides Goose Screen. And Goose Screen wanted something like six to $500 a quart. So someone came up with something called the YouTube Paint, which is pretty much a gray and black or black and white mixture that allowed for YouTubers or anybody else who wanted to make a screen on the cheap and basically still come up with a better image than a white surface. Because like I said, there were no other darker screens out there. You just had gray and white. That was it. So this video, let me see right here if I can go back on this fellow right here. All right. So this is a mixture. This is usually most of the mixtures that they used, which was pretty much bare 1050 which I told you from the door, bare 1050, because this is how they used to make it. Um, most people were actually going towards silver screen because silver screen was the way to go. Silver screen is nothing different. People think because if you buy a silver screen, it's silver. It's not silver, it's gray paint. That's all, it's gray paint. We've done demonstrations, silver screen versus our technology, silver screen, whatever. It's just everyday gray paint. You're going to pop open that lid thinking you're actually getting silver. When you're not getting silver, you're just actually getting gray. You see that? That is gray. That is not silver. That's what you're getting. And then you're going to need black. So like I told you, whether it be a gray paint, whether it be a white paint, doesn't make a difference. Black is considered to be the toner. The gray and white is the base. Now the in-betweens are pretty much some people may put in a form of high grain silver. They may put in um, a form of glitter. Usually they get that glitter from um, from Lowe's. And I'll tell you why, because with the Lowe's glitter, it's a fine, defined, very fine glitter. It's not gonna leave giant flakes all over the screen. It's gonna cause too much reflection, but it is gonna cause reflection. You're gonna see glitter flash across your screen every time the projector hits it, because it's still a glitter. Now, you do know what that's used for. People don't understand. If you're going into a paint store and you're buying paint for a projection screen and you don't know how the paint is utilized in the real world as in being used, being used in your home, then your reaction is going to be pretty bad. I used to be a painter, so I know for a fact that whatever I purchase or make, um, 
at that particular era when people were doing this, I knew exactly that how it was going to react and how I, basically I would perceive it on a wall. Now, that what I mean when I come back to that, that glitter effect, you know what that's used for, right? It's not used for projection to make the screens go brighter. It's actually used as a form of crystal effect to come off your walls. Back in the day, way back in the day, when people were doing those stucco walls to mix with glitter, if you remember your grandmother or somebody older would have this set up in their house, they would use everyday hobby glitter. They would drop the hobby glitter to the paint, they mix it up. Sometimes they put it in paint, sometimes they put it in stucco, and you come and you see this glitter ceiling. That's what it was for. But every once in a while, the glitter would come down and get in your furniture and whatever it was a hazard. So anyway, now they use a very fine uh, kind of glitter, and that's what it was used for. So when you walk into a house and you see that reflection going off like crazy, that's pretty much what the effect was used for. It was never meant to be used for a projection screen paint. So you put this stuff into paint, you warn that you're just going to have this Christmas glitter flashing across your screen all the time because that's what it was designed for. It wasn't to be designed for a projection screen product. This is why I said you have to know what you're doing before you go down to steal it and make sure making um, these... Um, these, uh, these accusations. So as you can see, the three paints here, like I said, it's the basic same thing. The YouTube paint was either gray and, and some black or was white and some black. Keep in mind that the gray and the white have, are just toners. That's not toners, but they're just the base. The toner is always going to be the black, no matter what. The more black you put in, the lighter it gets. Actually, the darker it gets, the less you put in light. That's your toner. And then the in-betweens are pretty, sometimes people put a little silver in there. You never want to see the silver. You're just not going to see it because what's going to happen is these two products right here are going to overcloud that product and that's going to be just, just disappear. You're just not going to see it. But in your head, because you think because you're putting in there, you really think you're seeing it, but you're just not seeing it. The only thing you are going to see is you will see the glitter. You're definitely going to see that. That's definitely going to pop up. Anytime you do a scene where it's going to show snow or anything like that, you're going to see that glitter effect popping across your screen. So I know. All right, so... I'll show you, and it's mixed the same way. It's no, this guy is just pouring it in. It's, it's just mixed the same way. You're just toning it. That's all you're doing. Now, as I said before, I'm going to show you the results that you will get, and the results will always be the same. You will never ever be at a pull contrast level, and you won't. I'm being honest with you. I can use my projector downstairs. One of them I have is a sixteen thousand to one. You're not going to pull it. The only screens we have under gray technology that can pull contrast levels are black silvers, and black silvers are coded screens. This is not a code. And I've had people, when I show them these demonstrations, they will mix this paint, put it on their wall, and come back and go, man, I mixed that paint, I put it on my wall, and uh, contrast levels are not pulling up, and this, that, and the other. Yeah, you have to have contrast levels. Well, how do you think you're gonna watch Batman or any of them dark movies? We, some of y'all out there playing Call of Duty or, and, and night mode, you can't pick any of that up. That's not gonna come up on your screen. I don't even know where that theory even came from. I mean, keep in mind, when we were developing green screen paints back in the day, even at one point, I thought I was seeing contrast levels. Until I saw a black diamond walk in there and I saw, ooh, wait a minute, I'm completely wrong. And I was completely wrong. There is no way in the world any of my old technology back in the day would have ever pulled a contrast level like the technology we have now. So he's painting the screen in. We are here, here. As you can see, it's gray. At the end of the day, no matter how you mix it, what you put in, what you combinate it, it comes out gray. You know why? Because the two key points are going to overshadow. It's going to be the black and the white. That's the only two things you're actually going to see. No matter what you mix in it, no matter what brand you use, it's still going to come out gray. And if it comes out that color, you're going to have a problem. So like I said, some people want to perceive like they were the only ones doing it first. No, 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 no. They weren't doing that first. Now I bet you a hundred bucks, if he does a video on it, if he does a paint and dry, which I doubt he's gonna do. I don't know if he's gonna do a paint and dry. A lot of people are still trying to follow behind the traditions of goose screens by saying, okay, you need a certain amount of time to make the screen sound more professional. You have to make it dry a certain amount of time. There's a screen right there. So let's see if he watches a movie off of it. Comes out the same way. No matter what you mix into it, bare 1050, 
and use a different form of black paint. So he's going to show this move. And I guarantee when the demonstration's done, lights out. He has to do it. It's going to wash it out. Get a frame wood trim. Actually, that we've done a few wood trims before. That's actually better than doing the tape because the tape is a pain in the neck because you have to get it straight all the way down. Wood trim, slap it up, bam, done. You know what I mean? And there's a demonstration. Lights out. You have to do that with the lights out. You don't have a choice. So, as I said before, it's just a gray and white paint mix. That's all it is. You can't use it before. You can't do that demonstration and fully lit environments. Only we could do that because we have black screens. Black screens are the only ones that have capabilities to be used in fully lit environments. I just did a pre-recorded pre demonstration yesterday of me walking around my house. All my projectors fired up. Again, you can't make these statements if you can't back them up. If you're saying that, oh, black screens is not the best for home theater, I can walk through my environment, I can watch Batman in a fully lit environment and my screen will not wash out and fade. And if that's the case, if they're just planting on all black screens, what about the black silver? Black silver is a gray, and they pull contrast levels heavier than dark gray certified screens. Or what about the ultra bright? Ultra brights are actually very light screens, and they pull contrast levels and insane white levels. What about the black slate? Black slates are dark gray screens that pull extremely high white levels. What about the ambulight rejection? Black 17. That screen pulls an insane white level, and it's extremely dark. So let's go to my favorite, which you should be able to pull, and no problem whatsoever, which is a Starfield demonstration in a fully lit environment. Look at the McDonald's commercial. So it's not important for you to be able to use contrast if your projector has the capability for contrast level, then keep in mind, these aren't screen paints. These are certified projection screens. Not screen paint, certified screen. Screens that took years and years to develop and make and went through testing after testing after testing after testing after testing in order to get that certified emblem on the side of their screen that says, hey, look, this is certified. But yet you can't use any of them in a fully lit environment and you can't display a Starfield demonstration on with it. So let me get this straight. If you're watching Star Wars or Batman or Underworld, or you're playing Call of Duty and you're doing any of those night missions or anything like that, what are you really seeing? Are you actually seeing contrast? Oh, that one decided to go like, no, no, forget it. All right, so let's come out of here real quick. We're gonna do a paint on demonstration right now. This is why when we request a star coat demonstration, it is never done due to the fact that the screen is not gonna be able to pull a contrast level. It's just not gonna have that ability. And then for someone, if they were even to say, well, Black screens can't pull white levels. Yeah, I wouldn't really go around saying that too much. I mean, our screens pull amazing white levels. We've done that demonstration already before. So we have a technology that can pull white level and a contrast level where a light gray screen can only pull white levels. And they really can't pull colors because their colors come out washed out. I said, if you're going to, if you're going to talk it, you got to back it up. So right here, we have a Supreme Black recoding. I don't get on camera, and I never have gotten on camera, and just talk for the sake of just talking. I always back up my work. We're gonna do a reverse. Now usually when I do these demonstrations, I usually do them with um, the white screen and a little bit of our stuff splattered in the middle. We're going to do vice versa. We're going to show a Starfield demonstration. We're going to do 
contrast demonstrations and we're going to show what happens if I splatter the middle of my black screen with a gray screen paint. Now keep in mind before uh, you jokers want to start hooting and carrying on to my oh but that's his pro no it's not his product. It's a black and white mixture. No one owns the right to black and white paint. Black and white paint has been around before you probably some of you were probably born. We've been doing it for years. I need something a little bit drier. Been doing it for years. So get over yourself. Keep in mind, if you want to argue about the black and white paint, I really wouldn't argue that one right there. I really wouldn't argue that one right there. So let's show you when to do a reverse. When to do a Starfield demonstration on our black technology. And let's show you why. Gray screens. And like I said, we have one right there. That's a black silver. We're going to put that up. We're going to display a Starfield demonstration. See how great that screen is? That screen is going to pull a contrast level it looks just like that. You know why? Because it's not everyday paint. There's a science behind what we do. That's the reason why none of our demonstrations are matched. None of them. How many people have matched the Sun Killer? Name one. No one has matched the Sun Killer. Because no one has a technology that can take a direct hit from the sun. Only we have that. Look at the ultra brights. Ultra brights can blend just about every screen. Eleven. Keep in mind. Think about the record those screens have, and they're not even launched yet. They have a record. They sit downstairs with a record of actually matching and outperforming 11 certified screens. 11 certified, not paints, certified screens. There's some paints here, but certified screens at only 1 and 2% done. They haven't even started their protesting, and already from the door, they're showing extreme, amazing capabilities. I got people still emailing me right now about the, um, that uh, black, 17. All right, so we got to roll it dry it off. This is a product. I left it um, squirreled, so you can see it's just everyday black and white. That's all it is. Now, let's see if we go in and we paint... On the side of this screen, where we're displaying a black star for the demonstration, if it's going to show any, if it's going to blend in. As a matter of fact, yeah, we're going to do that in some other demonstrations. I'm talking some other dark demonstrations we're going to be doing also too. All right, let me see what's going on. I need my fire stick to activate. Here we go. Now you see the difference between the contrast on my technology versus the white wall already. Look at that. Already. We haven't even got started yet. We haven't even got started. There you go. For a screen that's supposed to be so incredible dark. And I paint it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put that paint on demonstration I just did off my wall upstairs. It produces an insanely white level. These are twelves. Look how beautiful that looks. So you can't argue the case and say, "Well, they come up too dark." No, 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 no. That doesn't work anymore. Can't use that one anymore. Let me show you something. This is the angle gain from my technology. If I were to take my camera and move it from one edge to the next. It'll bring up a nice, bright image. So it's not that. So our screen, number one, can pull up in order. Keep in mind, in order to pull up color on a screen, you have to have white levels because you need a high enough white level to produce a bright enough image. That's where white levels come in. They're very important for black screens to be able to do this. 
Um, come in. Now, see, this is where, and I hate to say this, and I hate to go down this road, why people have to be careful what they say. And I'll tell you why. First things first, they want to give you a free black screen paint away. All right? That's what they're trying to program. You can make it yourself, free black screen paint, and then come on and say um, why they're not good, why I wouldn't go near them at all, period. So they convince you to put an untested product on your screen and damage it because I showed you where we basically made it back in 2019 and then showed you where they were trying to get away for free. It was showing the same results because the images were coming too dark. And then they come out and say, oh, um, why they're not the best. But they just told you that this is for free. You can paint it yourself, so and so and so, but it's not the best. See, there you go. Jumping all over the map. So first, before we start this, Let's show off some of the white levels our technology has. We're just going to get some random stuff. Mm. I'm not going to set up the account. I'm going as a guest. That's it. And we're just throwing some nice, pretty fish. All right. There you go. So you can't argue that 12s don't have the ability to pull high white levels because without those white levels, you wouldn't be able to see that pretty cool, beautiful blue fish, right, yellows, you wouldn't see any of that at all, period. None of that would come up on the screen at all. The screen would be too dark. You wouldn't be able to see it. So it's not that. All right. It's adding a little snow. See what happens. So again, coming to the snow scene, where it wouldn't be that blue. You wouldn't be to see any of that at all, period. So not having that problem at all. Now keep in mind, like I said, other screens, yeah, are going to be a little slightly higher than the technology because it's a lighter gray screen. This is a black surface you're talking about. But one thing they can't do is they can't pull contrast. All right, so and then we'll come over here. And we'll just pop on the beautiful ladies walking in front of the sports cars. Because I have people to come in and say, well, you know, you're showing contrast levels. Let me see how the colors pop off on that screen. Is that close enough for you? There you go. Now, let's put in the fun part. Starfield demonstration. Now, anyone who believes, and I hate to say this, if you honestly believe that you're gonna pull a contrast level of a I don't give it, I can't even say it. A gray screen paint mix, I'm talking about untested screen paint mix, and you're gonna get some better results. You'll see. And this stuff is untested. It's just black and white paint mix. There's no test behind it, there's no results behind it. All right, we'll do our start for the demonstration. We'll come over here and we're gonna grab, see what happens if your screen was, um, was uh, light gray. Shake our product here. Shade of cat. Interesting, this is the same color that the fellow was displaying in the video, wasn't it? It's not the same product. I told you, whatever you mix into it, the only two colors that are going to push through is going to be gray and white. Or black and, and, and white. It's the only two that are going to show up. You can put whatever you want in this at the end of the day, and it's still going to show up. You can throw silver in it, whatever. The only two colors that are going to push through that mix are going to be gray and white. Or white and black that's it so if you notice the ingredients he just showed you you seen the color same exact color same thing no difference so whatever they say you mix it with this and that it's all going to come out the same way just make it black and white save some money none of this on the rug over here, what they shouldn't be doing. I should have my rug pull back some. Uh, and think about that idea to last minute. Oh, I'm not gonna 
to mess up my rug. Come in. Yeah, that's more comfortable. So I'm going to take some of this paint and then put it on my roller. See what I mean? There you go. That's what happens. Can't see color. Can't see contrast. That's what you get. That's exactly what you get. Can't see it. You see? That's what I saw when I was sitting in my room and I saw that black diamond sample sheet laying against my gray screen. I saw something in that, in, that, in, that, in that product that I knew that in order for me to be able to survive in this field that I'm going to have to upgrade on a higher level and I'm going to have to really deep in, dig in and do some serious research on this kind of technology. And not only tell the technology, but you have to study the past before you can know the future on how things run and how they work. Then you have to study the physics of light. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes behind it. The physics of light allows you to be a design more advanced when it comes to uh, ambient light projection technology. It's not enough to make a screen look good. You have to be able to have an image, be able to heighten itself and look good in a well-lit environment. That's what happens. Some people don't see it on the reverse side. Usually when we do these demonstrations, we just go in and we just show you um, the gray screen, a white screen, and then we'll put the black screen up. This will give you a better idea of what you're, um, what you're getting yourself into. And this projector behind me only has a 4,000 to one. It doesn't make a difference if you have a 16,000 to one, 20,000 to one, you're just not going to see it. You're not going to pick it up. Okay. Um, let's go, uh, bring you guys in a little closer. And this is the reason why you cannot do watch movies or whatever you want to do, TV shows or whatever, in a fully lit environment. Because anything that comes up with any form of black contrast or color mixed into it is going to fade, number one, and the contrast is going to wash out. See, I had to wash the paint off my hands real quick to make sure I can figure out exactly. But it rolled my remote control into the rug. Probably don't need to left it in the room. Yeah, figure. Ah, did I? No. Okay, well, I'm going to This is one of my things I do often in my YouTube videos. I have a bad habit of losing remote controls. I was setting down to be going. Let me put the fan let this dry too. This is dry. And we'll get our product over here out of the way because we don't want it to dry out. No. So we can get a dry screen. There we go. So like I said, I tell people, go ahead. Go online, make that product and see how much you would damage your screen. So you're gonna to have to repaint your screen regardless, you're gonna to have to do it. Spend this money for, spend some nice projector. I got a Christie um, projector sitting behind me right now. Gonna make a difference how much money you put in your projector. If it's ultra short, throw if it's long, throw if it has a 20,000 to one, 16,000 to one. If it's 4K, if you can't pull contrast, contrast is everything. You have to have contrast. It's literally in everything you watch is contrast. Even TV shows have contrast. 
everything shows a black level. That's why when you buy a projector, one of the things they brag about on one of the perks is it has a massive contrast ratio capability. If it wasn't important, they wouldn't have put it in there. The first thing they talk about, and it comes with a mass of 20,000 to 1 contrast for deeper and richer black levels. You're not seeing it. You won't see it. There you go. Like I said, now remember, our technology is supposed to be perceived to be so dark that you can't see the image at all. As I said before, a gray screen or a white screen is going to produce a higher color. We're well, not higher color, sorry, a higher white level. But if you notice, if you look at our technology, tell me where in this woman's face you can't see her. There you go. We're just basically springboarding off what how people were trying to perceive our technology to be. As in so dark, you can't see the image. You can see the detail with no problem. As a matter of fact, you see where her nose cuts over? You can't even see the detail in her nose. Where's the background? Mine, this is an OLED demonstration. OLED demonstrations are meant to have black backgrounds. Again, here we go, color wash out. Look at the blue here, look at the blue there. And then they'll try to tell you, but you're getting a brighter, no, you're not getting a brighter image. You're getting a washed out faded image. That's what you're getting. Your colors are literally washing out on the screen. No, I'm asking you that. Now I'm showing the screen with ability to be able to maintain, mind you, like I said, we're going by what other people have stated our technology to be, so dark, you're not supposed to see the screen at all. The image is supposed to come out gritty and it's supposed to come out dirty. Water is supposed to be deep blue. Move on. I want to get the little girl one with the flowers. I like that one. I like those skin tones.
screen is still maintaining color with no problem. Like I said, image is supposed to be so dark. Not supposed to see it. I want to get the one for the little girl. Oh, this is going to be the picker. I'm going to play it right from here. I want you to see this. So as you can see, we can maintain color, a bright, beautiful image, but no problem. But the minute that screen switches over to a contrast level, look what you got. That's why I told you contrast is everything. up close see the reflection that's pushing off that wooden table now look at it over here on the gray screen paint let me bring it up here so you can get a nice look at that this is the reason why that's dry already this is the reason why you have to have contrast see the window seal see the reflection coming off the table and look at it when it gets here you have to be in the dark because your screen's not going to pick up that's why that's why every time you turn on your lights you're in color not only color washer contrast washes out your colors are definitely going on right along with it now I know when you saw the demonstration you're like well wait a minute I just saw beautiful colors yeah watch this color red it's gonna bring up a solid color for the projector to be able to read. You see what you're really actually getting. You're not seeing color at all, period. You can't pick it up. At the end of the day, you can't pick it up. If I'm showing you multiple blends of colors all together, it's camouflage. You're not really what you're seeing, what you're supposed to be seeing. When that projector sees red, this is what it's actually seeing when it hits your screen and it displays a solid red. That's what you're actually getting. We sell it. We don't we make it. Do you make screen printer? Do you sell it? That doesn't even make any sense right there. What do you mean? In order for us to be able to make our own product, wouldn't we have to manufacture and make it? Okay. I'll leave that one alone. Because I'm pretty sure, I mean, if I'm the if I'm the inventor, wouldn't I, an inventor means you would have to design and build something, right? So that means I would have to be able to make it in order to be able to sell it. That person. Wow. All right. Uh, that, that, is my, uh, that is my interesting question for the day. I had to talk to my business partners about that one. Someone just literally asked me, do I make it or do I sell it? All right, so let's go over to blue. The color blue. There you go. There's nothing special about it. You're just picking up a, um, a, uh, a, it's just paint. That's it. And I don't even know how to even explain it to you. You're just not seeing color. No matter how much you think in the back of your mind that you're seeing color, no, you're not seeing color. You're not getting it. It's not happening. Color dark green. Hey, come on, 
that too. I see. Dark Rain. You have Dark Rain over here? Oh, yeah, we'll take that. Let's bring up Batman Tumblr scene. So, here you go. Your filters are certified to filter lead, so get cleaner water for under $40. Ordering your Wawa favorites has never been easier. Get the Wawa app. There you go. See the reds pop up? Can't pull color. Too much of that, get in trouble. <clears throat> Let's go for clear this out. OG Beta Fish Demonstration. I don't even know why they bother showing um, LG demonstrations. LG demonstrations were designed to be used on jet black screens. That's what that demonstration was designed for, to show off their TVs. How are you displaying that on a screen that's gray? And then people are probably saying, but you, you did it on a black silver. Yeah, but black silver is not your everyday gray screen, which I'm gonna show you in the demonstration. There's your reds fading, as I showed you in the solid colors. Let's go to, um, let me see what we got. Let's try. Colors are supposed to pop. Now look, wash it out. And again, like I said, our black technology, you're not supposed to see it. That's supposed to be so dark, it's supposed to be gone.
Now, as we said before, we make several different screen paints. We make a black silver, because you have some people that are not comfortable with jet black screen, so we have a black silver edition. You may want something darker than the black silver, so we have a platinum eclipse. And then, if that's not your thing, some people love the gold screens, which we have now the 12 technology and gold, which you see now that, that, what that technology does. That screen took in all that window light upstairs in my Japanese tea room with no problem. And produced a star field where most screens won't even go near it. So we have options. It isn't like someone's trying to say, oh, but they only develop all black screens. If that's the case, we wouldn't have a black silver sitting right over there in the corner. And some people want contrast. They want heavy contrast. That's what they desire, and that's what the black technology is for. So we have a selection of products that you would want, that you may want. Like I said, when I tell people that, hey, look, if contrast isn't for you, then we have the black silvers. The black silvers produce higher contrast levels, and they have amazing white levels. Let's go with LG demonstrations. Search. I have never learned to walk on stilts. That was about, and just screwed up my, <laughs> almost screwed up my day. There's the color fade right there when I showed you solid reds. And that kettle is supposed to be black, not gray. Should have wrote my initials on the side of the screen. Contrast is very important for you to have on your projector and for your screen to be able to react to the projector that is producing contrast. That's why I showed you the solid colors first so you can see the image wash out. There you go. That's why I showed you the solid reds first. That's what your projector is actually seeing. They'll tell you, oh, but you're seeing a brighter image. No, you're not. Your image is washed out. That is not red.
Red is supposed to have a deep color to it. You have a washed out image. That's where they go and we're saying, well, you got to go calibrate your projector. I'm not calibrating jack. I'm not going to calibrate my projector. For what? When I got a screen automatically that can just going to give me the colors that I need. Convince you and tell you that hey look you're getting a brighter image. No, you're not. You got a washed out image. That's what you got. Color fades and washes out. Now, if anybody gets deeply offended over this, then, like I said, you know it's twisting your arm. I mean, bottom line, if you want colors like this and this is what you want for your, for your projector setup, hey, knock yourself out. You know what I mean? Me, on the other hand, and my customers, we want something much, much better. You know, I want to be dealing with the screen that's going to wash out, colors going to wash out. Yeah, I'm do that. Strawberries. Stare at them.
there, you would see that in any way possible how a black screen is not going to be good for home theater because I got a fellow who just has the Christie 505. He's going to be doing a lot of videos for us. He's going to show off his customized home theater setup that is absolutely amazing, his basement. And he's using black technology. And he's going to show up the strong points of having black technology is the fact that your colors don't fade and wash out. You can pull 100% contrast levels. And you can utilize the contrast settings in your projector where you don't need them at all, period, because the screen's black. So instead of you going out spending all this money for an expensive projector, because you feel it's going to give you contrast levels and you have a great screen, you have to go through all that. I have projectors over here that have zero contrast capabilities and they can still pull on our black screens a higher contrast than any high performance projector using a, um, a setup of maybe a million to one contrast. Easily. Now, look at the rose. Completely washed out. Let me show you how we fix that problem. See, anything, anywhere, paint splattered on my screen. Right here, see that? Automatically disrupt the picture. Let's play this through. I'm gonna do something interesting. Showed you the color green. There you go. People want more deeper, more richer blues. This is why people go into calibrating their projector because they want deeper and richer colors. See what happens when you don't have contrast? You cook, you kill all the detail. So you can't see the detail in the island because it's washed out. Not even there. It's completely washed out. Let's go with a search. Let's see. Now, there's your contrast levels right there. black shine off the back of that horse so it'll tell you oh but you're getting a brighter black no you're not you got a washed out black your blacks are completely washed out so that shine off the back of that horse's tail right there his hind legs and look right here no detail you can't pull detail that's why it's washed out there and you can see the shine off that horse that rose
Watch that reds. Blues are gonna come up exactly the same way. about this but hey look it's your projection screen at the end of the day it's your setup at the end of the day you got to look at it not me that's what i said that should be our new slogan it's your setup at the end of the day you got to look at it not me It just shows you what you're missing on black technology and why it's needed. Like I said, if it was something that wasn't required to have darker screens to produce better contrast levels, there'd be no black diamonds, there'd be no DMP supernovas, you know, you know, they had the blade over there, they like made that, that dark screen, there'd be none of that. There'd be no point to basically make darker screens or darker gray screens. There'd be no point. Nobody would be doing it because it'd be pointless. You would have never saw Screen Innovation come out there with that sample sheet moving it back and forth on a white screen. It'd be pointless. If contrast wasn't important. As I said, before people tell you that something isn't important or this, that, and the other, before people start talking, you have to back it up. Let's fix this problem. It's already, like I said, anything that comes up, you know, contrast, gone. It's contrast literally in everything. All right, let's come over here and let's go over to our star field demonstration. I don't know what the freak that was all about. Starfield screensaver. Look at the greens that washed out. You think you're really seeing a contrast level on a gray screen. You really believe that. No, you're not getting it. It's not coming up. So as I showed you in this demonstration, I showed you multiple colors, blues, gray, greens, whatever colors you pulled up. You're not going to be able to see proper color. This is why you have to calibrate your projector. You definitely don't see contrast. And as for our technology not being able to be able to, be able to pull up a heightened image that you can't see it. So it's so dark you can't see it. Completely false. But let's fix this problem right now. So I wouldn't advise you doing this and don't do this, please. Do not go around painting your screen with a sponge. But I'm just doing this here for fun. I'm going to take some of our black technology. I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to bring back this star field demonstration.
Let's bring in red. Let's make it complicated. So, as I said before, with our technology, it gets brighter as it dries. So, we're gonna paint it there first. We're not gonna use a star fill. Star fill would be too easy. Let's just use a solid red. Just to show you your color that you're losing. And in order for a black screen to be able to pull a red level, and it would have, have the ability to pull a white level to do it. Like I said, do not paint your screen with a sponge. And just for fun. You guys will actually go out there and do it. You're going to call me like, hey, Ken, I think you paint a screen with a sponge. Is that possible? Again, do not paint a screen with a sponge. These, I'll tell you, like when I get up, I'm thinking like, what am I doing today? I'm doing this demonstration today. Completely foolproof, like literally, like seriously, your kids could actually paint this screen for you. There you go. So, if our technology couldn't read color, just watch me paint over a gray screen using our black technology producing a better color than the gray screen and we can take a white wall too. There you go. So like I said, how many people do you see doing demonstrations like that on YouTube? Nobody. How many people do demonstrations when it comes to their black technology? Well they have black technology and they're doing it right. Nobody. I'm the only one that can come on here and paint and literally a black screen on a red surface and produce a red image while using black paint. Just so you can see, it's all black. You have to be able to show the difference what makes your technology different from everybody else? That's why you can't go out there and say the reason why you shouldn't use black screens with home theater setups. No, do not category us with everybody else. We're not everybody else. That's like me coming out there saying that all cars drive the same. All food tastes the same. All people are the same. Can't do that. People say, but Ken, I've never seen you do that demonstration before. There's a lot of stuff this technology can do that you don't understand has the capabilities. We don't show you everything. Sometimes I say certain things for special occasions, like this. And that's the reason why I say you don't paint your screen with a sponge. But that's just to show you that I can come over here. It, like I said, doing a Starfield demonstration, I wasn't thinking about that when I was doing it. Like, that's too easy. If I do a Starfield demonstration, anybody can say, well, I can take any black paint and I can do the same thing over gray paint. But can you do it over a red screen? Which shows you that when we're talking about coding technology, which means the projector can produce a red image and the screen has the ability to be able to read it. I've been telling you guys this for almost forever. Those of you who believe it, thank you so much. Those of you who don't, eh, don't care. Like I said, at the end of the day, I just painted black paint onto a black surface, projecting, actually onto a gray surface, projecting a red image, and actually the color came up red and not black. Isn't that interesting?
Let's do the hand over here. Yeah. I'm going to start doing more of these demonstrations to display our, co our color coding capabilities. We're just going to take a black screen, paint half of it gray. Then we're going to come out here, do a blue screen off of it, and just paint it in with black paint and have it come up blue. I'm going to start doing those more often. That's freaking fun. Got to start doing those more often. Do more of those. That is fun. Is that part dry already? This part right here. I'm gonna paint this thing. It's just dry. Those of you missed that, you might want to rewind that one. That is freaking cool. I gotta do that one again. So we'll get that to dry. Then we just roll. I'm gonna roll right back over. I'm gonna go back. I gotta go on Facebook Live anyway. They gotta see that one. That is freaking cool. You know what? At the end of the day, I really don't care if the naysayers don't believe whether I have coding technology. You don't buy my stuff, so I don't care. Matter of fact, this is going to land me a couple more contracts. Because actually, I got, I got to go back and rewind this and look at this myself. I usually don't do demonstrations like this, and God gives me amazing ideas and say, you know what? Let's paint the screen and then go over top of it and do it red. Because I'm thinking, like, if I did it black with the stars, anybody can do that demonstration with black paint. You know how hard it is to try to pull that demonstration off when you're displaying a red surface? That means your black screen paint is going to have to be able to pull a high red level, high enough where the color is not going to come out too dark. And the fact that we're able to come in here and do this, yeah, all right. I closed my case on basically on advancements of our black technology and coding capabilities. That was freaking, I like that. I have got to paint the main time. So I guess I'll have to put down the bottom of the comments and go right and do not. Paint your screen with a sponge. Because I'm literally gonna have people trying to paint the screen with a sponge. Do not do that. Do not paint your screen with a sponge. Easy. I'm almost out.
Harry's done. you before at the white levels on the technology are extremely good. Nothing that's going to disrupt the picture quality of the screen at all whatsoever. If that was the case, the screen would come up extremely dark and you would not be able to see it. But judging by that freaking color demonstration I just did, well there should be no more talk on this matter. Because I have yet to see any black screen perform that one. And that screen a few minutes ago was just painted with a dish sponge, which I advise you don't do. Now keep in mind, as I said before, if I were to take this technology and I would put it against, and I've done it before, gray screens, other screens, lighter than screen, it's going to come up a tad darker, but nothing where it's going to disrupt your picture quality. Just like if I take any gray screen or white screen and I stick it against a black screen and pull a contrast level, they're going to completely disappear, which at least we can show a white level. We can show bright colors, or if you do a gray screen or one of those screens, they don't have that capability unless they have our coding technology and if they don't have code then they don't work which i'll show you in the gray one too but there's no point in me talking about gray screens if i'm not going to show you the black silver but let's enjoy this right now while the screen dries as i painted it with a dish sponge Turn that fan out a little bit lower. We don't need that high now. Sorry about that, people. Where is uh? And never, never know where. I put, oh, here's right over here. I literally got to get a holster for this thing. I lose this thing so much. 
I'm gonna go back to something real quick. Let's get you up nice and close on that screen so you can see. And that's what you want when it comes to your screen. You want nice, beautiful, deep, rich color. That's what OLED TVs promise you because the screen pulls an amazing high contrast level. It can produce amazing, beautiful, deep, rich colors. Let me let you know when you ever turn an OLED TV in the background of your screen is gray. Because if it is, like I said, you might want to take that one back and get another one. They're supposed to be jet black. Contrast levels weren't important for home theater. They wouldn't put it on your projector. People come out there and make accusations. I call it an untested theory, which means you have no tests backing up your theory. Just nothing but talk. Do you honestly believe that you're actually going to be able to see that on a screen that can't pull a contrast level on a gray paint? You honestly believe you're going to see that? You're not seeing that at all, period. You're not even going to get that. That's not going to happen. There you go. That's what you get. That's what you got. You're not seeing that. You're not seeing no contrast level for that. Can't pull a contrast level. I love it. I'm going to tell you something. I can't wait to do a... I did a paint on demonstration outside. I forgot about that. What the heck am I talking about? You go to my YouTube channel, the first video that pops up is me actually painting a black screen outside against a white and gray screen. Yeah, that one right there. Back to outside. My paint on demonstration outside. Now I just want to paint back over top of that with some of my black product because it's good. All right, so let's go back in again. I'm gonna get that to dry. We gotta paint over that. Watch this. Color blue. The color blue.
guess you would have to calibrate your projector to try to get it close to the black screen as possible. Mm. I'm not taking that out of the box. Keep in mind, I do unboxings all the time. So I take projectors, pop them right out of the box, and throw them right up on the screen without any of the settings being touched. So I do those too. Those of you that are probably want to pop it to the channel and say, well, what about the settings on your projectors? I do unboxings, which means when projectors come here, pop them out of the box, throw them on the screen, ba-da. So while we're getting that to dry, let's go have fun with the black silver. Now this right here is when I was talking about gray screens, gray screens, where people say, well, can you have a gray screen? Yeah, we do have one. That's a black silver right there. Let's see what black silvers do when it comes to contrast levels. So I'm going to grab my stand here because I have to bring it up. i got to put this up a little higher while that screen sits here and dries. And i got to put the fan up there because the fan in no way is hitting my screen. So I'm going to bring this up. And then we're just going to hit my screen over here. Let's see what we get off the black silver. There you go. And let's bring it a little higher up. Now black silvers, like I said, only black screens have the ability to be able to produce the highest contrast levels because they're black. And because they're black, the colors are going to be a little bit more richer. Now with the black silvers, they produce a higher white level, but the contrast levels are insanely good. So we're going to take here. Yeah. I'm not worried about marking up the screen because I'm planning to repaint the screen. I don't know when, but I'm planning to repaint it. We'll put that there for that to dry. And then we're going to do is come over to my, uh, oh, you notice the screen's turned dark, right? Yeah, because it has code technology in it. That's why. Watch this. You haven't seen anything yet. Let's expand the picture. You can hit the wall and everything with it. Let's bring it up. See, when I was asking people, I love doing the gray screen demonstrations because it puts us right in their backyard. Now, we do black screens or blue screens or purple screens or anything like that. That's different. Now, that puts me in a whole different playing field. But when I have a gray screen, and keep in mind, you don't want me to bring upstairs an ultra bright 17 because you do know what that screen is capable of doing. Or one of the black slate. Any of the 17s, if I pull them upstairs, it's lights out. That's like Russian roulette with every bullet in the chamber. You're not going to win that one. So keep in mind, we already have future-proof technology for 2021 sitting downstairs waiting to be activated. We just showed you sneak peeks of what it can do. So let's go over here and let's pull up. Let me see. And uh, keep in mind, when we did the 11 certified screens, it wasn't to send a message to hobbyists. It was to send a message to professional companies to let them know what they're going to be dealing with next year. That's what that message was about. But let them know that we're doing things on a different level and things are going to cost a little more affordable because I'm not spending $6,000 for a projection screen. Starfield screen saver. There you go. Well, let's go get some certified screens. So I think darkest screen that we can put against that one will be the parallax, if I'm saying that correctly. I think that screen makes up all the time. And a dark star nine. They're much darker than my screen. So we'll go get them. I'll be right back. I'm going to be drying them down at all. Black screens, we make several different forms of screens. 
like I said, if the black screen is not to your liking, we got a black silver. We have golds, the 12s. You've seen how they look. That's actually fantastic. So we got other screen colors that are not all black. But they just rant on that particular one. So let's come in here and let's take the dark stern eye, which is much darker than my screen, as I showed you my screen over there. All right. Start for demonstration. There. Look at those straighter. There. All right. Uh, let's bring out the, I think it's parallax, parallax, whatever. How dark this screen is compared to my screen. We'll put that right here, there. And then we'll put another gray screen next to my screen, which would be a cinema gray 5D. Now, mind you, these are all certified screens. Right there. All right. Now, let's see which screen pulls up the darker contrast level. I explained this before in my last couple last demonstrations. Before we got into developing great screens again, I said that I would love to see a demonstration on a Starfield demonstration, and I want to see multiple gray screens together to see which one's going to pull the highest contrast levels. Because, like I said, any gray screen is going to have the ability to pull white levels. That's a given. That's automatic. The hardest thing for a gray screen to pull is a contrast level. So, that's what I wanted to see. Was a demonstration ever done? No, it wasn't done. So, I came in here, developed the black silver, did the demonstration, showing you how it's supposed to be done. The reason why they won't do that, because they don't want to cut corners. I don't cut corners in my demonstrations. That's why you got high performance, professional companies such as Liz testing their technology on white screens. Anything's going to be the white screen. How are you basing your technology off a white screen? See? That's the problem I have. It's not my problem. It's their problem. Because if you're testing your technology off a white screen, and I'm testing my technology, my great technology off your great screens, who do you think is going to come out more superior in the end? The color red. There you go. Case closed. We have a gray screen that can produce a white level, a high contrast level, and can produce deeper and better colors in contrast levels than other gray screens. So when people sit there and say, well, black screens aren't the best for your home entertainment, I can come out there and show you where they're wrong. And I can say, hey, gray screens, this, that, and the other. And then some people may come at me and say, well, can you say gray screens, but what about your gray screen? Well, there you go. I can back it up. The color blue. Here's a fun one, the color gray. Isn't that interesting? All gray screens, my screen's lighter than their gray screens, and my screen is actually picking up the darker gray. Let me see. Let's pull something else up. Let's pull up the color green. See how my colors are popping up? See how their colors are fading? Interesting commercial. There you go. So that's why what makes our product different from every other screen, every other screen paint on the market, is we have code technology, which means that's something we engineered and we designed. That's why we applied for a trademark secret for that code, because that code allows our screens to be able to read a projector which means you're seeing it right here. A gray screen producing a bright, beautiful, vivid green, and these screens are darker than my screen, except for that one should be the same color. Isn't that interesting? Let's go back to, let's see. Hmm. Kind of this one.
bring this down a little bit. We'll bring it up a little bit. There you go. Got to be able to back it up. Like I said, can't just talk it. You have to be able to back it up. Whether you like me or not, I can back it up. Now, you know what's interesting here? And now, my customers love me. Thank you so much for the support. I really do. It's the naysayers that hate me. It's the companies that hate me. The companies hate me because I can develop technology that's cheaper that my customers can afford, make it easy for them to have a high performance screen. They don't have to spend a lot of money for projector. That can be 4K. It can be 720p and they can get an amazing image off our technology. The hobbyists hate us because we raised the bar. And every time we raise the bar, they got to work a little harder. And if they got to work a little harder, that means they have to try to debunk our theory by saying our stuff is fake in order for them to make themselves look good so they can basically be on the level that we're on now. Follow me? But we keep coming out here and doing these crazy demonstrations that they can't seem to follow behind. And just for fun, like I said, I love my Lord and Savior because he says, you know what, you want to play that game? I got something for you. We got three screens, like I said, sitting downstairs, 2021s down there that are far more advanced than 11 certifies. So that says, hey, look, if you think you're going to go toe to toe with us, and you know what? We can bring those babies out, load them up, and get this going. And we'll level everything you have with just that technology at freaking 2%. And if you think that's the end of it, we're just getting started. Because near end of summer, we come out with the 21s. And the 21s have sun killer technology embedded in them. So, we're so far advanced. I would like to, but the TV's too expensive. <laughs> I would love to. As a matter of fact, we got a screen downstairs that's super black. That screen is actually uh, three times shader darker than the 12s. But like I said, uh, one day when I get the money or someone will let me wonder if I can buy one cheap off eBay, I'll find out whether or not if I can or not. You know what I mean? But I tell you one thing, that uh, that um, that sun killer uh, technology. I guarantee you, you can't take a TV outside and do what that screen just did. But yeah, them things are crazy expensive. My friend spent $15,000 for an 80 inch, I think it was an 8K, whatever. I was like, good gracious, man. Shoot. That's insane. 15 grand. 15 grand just to have his kids come in and throw a matchbox card and ricochet off the side of the screen and scratch the living daylights out of it. And then he wanted to call customer support or some kind of to get find out exactly what it's going to cost them. It was so expensive. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But that's the whole option. The whole option is develop technology that everybody can afford. Nobody had wants to go on and spend five and six thousand dollars for a projection screen. So that means you tell me if you want to have this particular screen, you got to spend all this money. That's crazy. All right, let's get back to the other screen because it's already dried already. And mind you, you know how much this technology costs right here on our website? It is, uh, I think it's $89. That's it. $89. That's a $5,000 screen. That's a $3,000 screen. That's a $1,400 screen. And that screen right there would cost you around about $79 or $89 around that price. Yep, and you could paint 100 inch to 120 inch. These are just 100 inch screens for 3,000, 5,000, and 14. All right, so let's go back. My screen's already dry already, so let's bring this down. This is our great, now my, these are our great screens. And keep in mind, they are, for those who are asking, they're ultra short throw compatible, and you can use them outside if you want. They're fully weatherproof. All right, so let's get back to our demonstration here. The black screen. You have to understand, I can't come out here and show you a demonstration on a black screen and then say, hey, look, you know, gray screens 
or this and that, but I have to be the, I have a gray screen, so I have to be the back it up. So I have to show you my gray screen technology too. Let's get this over here. Just a leg there. And let's bring this up. We gotta bring it down some, because I need to hit the whole entire whole entire screen from the door. All right, and we need to focus this a little better. All right, let me find the magic remote control to get this party started. Manual pull down screen. Yeah, you can, I got one in my gaming room. I got a screen that I paid $68 for and I used it to beat a $3,000 Dark Star 9. Yep, painted motorized projection screen. Um, I think later on the day, would you like to see one later on the day? I'll do a demonstration later on the day on the ultra short throw. I got an ultra short throw in the gaming room. And we got a motorized projection screen in there. I'll hook it up to something and I'll show you the roll the screen up and down over and over and over again. And I'll show you that demonstration. I'll post and do it later on today. But yeah, you can do motorized projection screens. I do them all the time. I want to get my hands on a motorized tension screen. No problem, no problem. I got that for you. I got you. So let's do this real quick. I got you. We can probably squeeze in this demonstration too. I mean, it's right upstairs. I'm going to hop in and skip. We'll do a roll up and roll down. There's a black screen. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I really do. Right. Let's go with blue screen. So we're going to do something a bit crazy. I did this in the last one. I did it with a red. So now we're going to do it with a solid blue, as I showed you before. So what we're going to do is, as I told you before, if I did this demonstration, doing a star throw demonstration, anybody could do it if they were using any kind of normal black paint. I'm showing you this demonstration where I'm going to actually color in all this. Don't do this with a sponge, but I'm going to do it with a sponge, and I'm going to use our black technology, which is actually going to convert to blue once the projector hits it. All right? And that shows you how the color code actually activates when being hit. So we're going to take our black paint here. This is our Supreme Black. And bring you over here so you can see that it is black. It's not red or blue or any other color. It is what it's supposed to be. See? All right. What we're going to do is we're going to brush this on across the white areas on the screen and they're going to automatically convert over to blue. Now as the screen is dark, it starts off dark and as it starts to dry, it gets lighter so we're going to put the fan on it. Like I said, I don't provide you doing it with a sponge, but I'm just doing it for kicks and giggles. Rub that in there. on my hands. Ooh. All right. All right, so, put it that dry. You're asking for like what? A projector, like a Starfield projector? That's what you want to use? Like one of those? Because actually out of the six I bought, one, two, three, four, yeah, five I bought, there's only one of them I actually liked. Now, there's two ways. You can put a projector on your ceiling, which 
I have right here. That's one that I actually use to project an image up on the ceiling right there. You can go that way. Or if you don't want to run a projector, then you can go with one of these. Now, while that's drying, over there. This one right here cost me around $100. It's okay, but it has its limitations on it. It does, and on top of that, keep in mind, these things have lasers on them. So if you're getting this in a kid's room, you may want to mount this up high. See how these little brackets in the bottom? Mount them up high. You don't want your kids sticking your face in one of these. I've walked into a few, a couple of these. They all have lasers on them. See, lasers right there. So make sure you mount them up high so the kids or the dogs don't go near them. This one right here is okay. I paid 100 bucks for this one. It's, it's okay. When I first got it, it was pretty cool. Then I got this one over here for around, this is called the, uh, the Bliss Sky or Sky Bliss or the Bliss Your Sky. This is actually a pretty good one right here. Um, that one I paid about uh, $59 for. Then I went and I bought this one right here. I got this for 20 bucks. The reason why, because this one has a shooting star effect in it. And what you do is when you do multiple projectors, Onto your ceiling, they overlap each other and it causes like a universe. It is the coolest thing. You ever see me do this at nighttime? It just shows different layers of different projections and it gives off kind of a 3D effect. It works better if the ceiling is black. It does, but it's still, you still get a pretty cool effect if you're doing it on a white, white screen because some people, with white ceiling because some people don't want to paint their ceilings like that. All right, so this is the same one. Now, this one out of all of them, this one was 20, this one was 59. That is the best one I've ever purchased. Okay, now I don't have, there's no name on it, like I said, but I know where I bought it from. I'll put a link at the bottom where you can get it from. This one cost me $39. It is freaking insane. It shows these stars that push off and they move slowly around in this circular position. Some blink dim, some blink bright. Then it has this kind of blue and green interchanging atmosphere like Milky Way that blends in and out. It is absolutely beautiful. It does come with a remote control. We can actually program it to all different kinds of cool effects. Like I said, it cost me $39, and I think, make my hand short and dry. Well, there's no brackets, but I may, you might want to put that up on a shelf, because this is one that I actually walked in front of, too, that actually has a, a laser, an active laser on it. So, like I said, out of all of them, this would be the one to buy. You know, that'd be the one to buy. But if you want to get a mixture effect, then multiple projectors will give you that mixture effect. Now, oh, one thing I want to add real quick. You can put two of these in a the room. They don't bother each other. Two of these in a the room. They don't conflict with each other. You can't put two of these in the same room. I don't know what it is about the remote control. If you turn one off, the other one comes on. If you turn one on, the other one comes up, turns off. So that right there, like I said, is a good projector, but I don't know how far you have to have them apart in order to be able to have them work. There we go. Now, while you guys are watching that dry, I'm going to go upstairs and set up the roll down projection screen, it's already mounted upstairs. Just gonna grab something that I can use to watch a video through, probably run my PS4 through it, so I can set that up for the other fellow who was wondering about the motorized projection screen. So I'll be right back and we'll get that to dry. I'll make sure I put that link in for you.
Alright. I'm all set up upstairs. There we go. Alright, so let's go pop upstairs real quick. This is the gaming room, or one of the gaming rooms. This is the arcade room. I'm going to be in here right now. And that right there is my blue screen at 106 inches. And there's my motorized projection screen right there on my ultra shirt throw. And that right there, I used, uh, bought this screen off of eBay for $68. That's all I paid for. The good thing was 92 because 100 inch was just not going to fit in here. And I was able to uh, paint this in no time at all. So it's very easy to do. Um, you can actually paint it against the wall or you can just roll it down. And all you want to do is take your frog tape, I'll show you up close, take your frog tape and you want to put it about an inch away from the screen. All the way around here and here and here. And up here you make sure you want to tape over this quite well. Reason why you want to thank you. The reason why you want to put double it up here because when people roll, sometimes they may slip, and you don't want to hit this part right here. So that's all you got to do. Um, I'll put a couple of demonstration links at the bottom. I actually did the screen live, by showing you how to paint the screen. Let me go get something because I want to roll the screen up and down so I can show you that you don't have to worry about the screen jamming or having any problems with the motor. I'll take an adapter for that.
if that one escapes. Sir, I'm tracking something down. I can't seem to find We have it here in the house. Just can't figure out where it's at in the house. Sorry about that. I had to search through the entire house. We got these all over the house. I bought these in bundles, and I couldn't find one. I got to roll the screen up and down, and I couldn't find one of these. I do it because the adapter on the other end, this, has three prongs. So I'm going to show you if you can roll the screen up because what some people do in their demonstrations, they'll paint the screen. They'll paint the screen and show you how to paint it, but they'll fail to roll it up in front of you because you have to see the screen roll. It's up to you. Uh, I've done paint on wall demonstrations. I did one recently, but I like the roll up because if I have something there in the way, or one guy was saying that he has a roll up because uh, his kids, his kids, he don't want the kids to mess up. Screw how many kids are cool, but usually kids, if they see a large blank surface, for some reason they get the urge to draw on it. So he has to roll it up and keep it away from the kids or the pets or something like that in the house. For me, it's because I got a closet here. And I need to be to get to my closet from time to time. So let's uh, let's roll this up. Yeah, you, know, you gotta understand. Imagine you having a a white wall or any wall in your house. Kids will look at that. Not to get put anything wrong against kids. Trust me, don't do nothing wrong. Kids are wonderful and beautiful. But like I said, they see something large, they want to draw on it. The first thing to go are your walls, because they will draw on your walls. I mean, I did it many times. We all did it. Come on, we all did this because we see a big surface. We think that's the biggest canvas we ever had, and we want to put our artwork on it. So yeah, I had an incident where a customer, basically his kid came in and drew stick figures and everything all over his screen, and he was asking us how to fix it. I'm like, oh, just, just roll over it, just do that. We're going to do that demonstration. I'm going to take a screen. And we're going to draw on it with crowns and whatever. I wish I could have my little ones over here, but because of COVID, we can't bring them over. But I would love to have them just draw all over the screen, which I'm going to do it myself. I'll buy some markers and some paint, and I'll basically mark a screen up really bad. And then I'll just show you how to just fix it, just roll over it and be done with it. You know, you don't have to sand it or none of that. Just roll over and be done with it. But other than that, yeah. Well, if you don't want, like I said, if you don't want the black technology, we make it in several different forms. We have a platinum eclipse, which is a really dark gray screen. We have the black silvers, which are actually gray, and then we have nines. So, you know, like I said, black people, that's not black people, but some people just don't want that black surface. I like having the giant black screen because I like having that giant OLED looking screen. It's pretty cool when I have customers that come over and they go, good gracious, so I have a few friends that'll pop over and they see this giant black screen on my wall like, well, what the freak is that? Because they're used to seeing white projection screens. And I go, nope, it's a black screen. They're like, that's not a black screen. There's no way in the world that's going to work. And then I pop on the projector and they see this. Yeah, eBay. eBay is a good place to go. They go pick up projector, projector screens. I buy my motorized projection screens. Okay, I buy my... Yeah, I buy my um, 
my fixed frame screens from Amazon, which I paid $185 for this one. This is what I paid for that one. This one was actually painted directly onto the wall. But yeah, I paid 180 bucks for this, and then I paid for an elite screen, which cost me 260 bucks to paint that one. But like I said, you're just better off just getting to go out. Go to Amazon and buy your fixed frame screens. I'm gonna tell you that right from the door. They got some good fixed frame screens on eBay, but I like to buy them from Amazon because I've had some incidents. Not saying all merchants are the same way. I would never say that. But I've had some instances where somebody put something false in their eBay listing by saying it was going to ship within the United States and it wasn't. I got my screen like a month later, so I didn't like that. So I go to Amazon and buy my fixed frame screens, and then I go over to um, my motorized screens. I usually buy those from eBay because um, uh, the motorized screens on Amazon are just a bit too expensive for me. Let's start about that, rocking you guys back and forth. Rock you like a hurricane. Rock you like a hurricane. You hear about that new stream law they're gonna be, they're gonna be trying to pass? It is pretty messed. I don't know how how it goes. I'm actually gonna read through it, and I'm curious because I stream a lot, and I may have to basically cut down all streaming if this law actually passes. This is gonna be freaking berserk. Uh, thanks for the tips. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. I'm going to leave the links down below where you can get that projector from or anybody wants that particular projector. I'll put the links down for that. That's a really cool projector. And if I can figure out exactly where I bought this from, those of you who want a cheap gaming reclining chair, you don't want to spend a lot of money. This one right here I purchased off of, um, I purchased off of uh, uh, Amazon for a hundred bucks. That's it. Now, it, for me, it's a good size. I'm 5'11". I fit in it perfectly. For those of you who may have some back problems or maybe just want a massager, it does come with a built-in massager, and the massager is right there, right in your back. You know, when you've got that area in your lower back, this chair is beautiful. Every time I sit in this chair, I fall asleep every single time, and only $100. So I'm going to track it down and put the link there for you. You heard about the streaming. You heard about that? You heard about that? That law they're going to pass, they're talking about if you show any movies, if you show any music, say you're doing a TikTok video and somebody behind you or maybe in your house and you're playing some music in the background, if you're caught with any of that, and I'm hoping it's not as strict as they say it is, but any of that content, they're talking about a felony of 10 years. That's crazy. You know, people would be sitting in jail right now. Everybody in TikTok and whatever video, somebody skateboarding, walking by with a bag of Doritos or whatever. I mean, that's kind of craziness right there. I mean, I guess I can see if you go out and get a bag of Doritos and said, hey, you found a mouse head in it. It wasn't true. You know, then, then there you go. That's liable for a lawsuit. But you're just walking by in a video with a bag of Doritos and bam, you can be sued for it. Man, yeah, it's greedy. It's greedy corporations. That's for, isn't that free advertising? Will you consider that to be free advertising? If somebody was walking by with my Doritos and I saw it like in a Tony Hawk's or maybe some other skater's video, I would take that as a form of, yeah, they got someone's eating my product. That's what you want them to do. Buy and eat your product. Yeah, that's what it all is about. Corruption. But it, it's free advertising. That's the best advertising in the world because it's real. It's not rehearsed. Got a bunch of kids in the back talking about, yeah, man, I'm freaking bragging about what Doritos they like. I think that'd be the best commercial ever. Yeah. That's what they consider it to be. It's, it's pretty messed up. You know, that's what they consider it to be. But it's pretty messed up. You know, I would rather have that advertised and real people sitting around discussing on what Doritos they like the best and which ones they eat more. You know, keep in mind... Keep in mind, um, uh, I, a lot of my Western movies that I paid for, literally went down and paid for, was because somebody on YouTube was showing off a clip from a Western movie i never seen before, and I'm a big Western fan. I go, oh, what the freak is that? And I go, that's so-and-so-and-so. And so. Then I go on uh, Netflix, and Netflix ain't got it. I'll go through my PlayStation store, and if they got it, I buy it. So I bought a lot of my movies just from watching somebody advertise a clip of the movie. So they made money off of me. So I don't know why you would want to shut that down. Or people who do gaming streams. Why would you want to shut down a gaming stream? They're advertising for you. I bought a lot of games from watching gaming streams. Somebody's playing this game in the background. I'll send a message like, hey, what are you playing? I'm playing so-and-so and so. I go check my store and I'll buy it. That's how I found about World War Z, the game I was playing last night. 
I found out about that because somebody was playing that stream. They were doing a gaming stream off of it. I was like, oh, what is that? And I went and bought it. And I bought all the DLCs that went along with it. And I got other people to buy along with me so they can play with me. Yeah. And that's the way the world is. All right, people. Right now, they got this game coming out. And I'm trying to bring on as many players as I possibly can. If you are a Left 4 Dead fan, a Left 4 Dead fan, or I'm just, you know, go check out a game called um, Back for Blood. Please go check it out. That is the most berserk zombie game. I'm a huge fan of zombie games, and that is the best zombie game I have seen so far, except for World War Z is pretty, is good. It's really good. World War Z reminds me of uh, Left 4 Dead on steroids, but this freaking game takes everything to the next level. It is freaking beyond berserk. Weapon change-ups. All kinds of special effects, melee combat moves, everything. It's a game called um, um, Back for Blood. Check it out. I saw it on Facebook. Somebody was showing a stream of it. Again, like I said, someone was showing a stream of it. That's how I found out about it. And I'm already set. I'm doing my pre-order as fast as possible to get my hands on it. And uh, keep in mind, as I told you before that, I don't want to buy a PS5 or an Xbox Series due to the fact that I don't want my system to brick and have bugs in it. I'd rather wait. But for this game alone, I'm willing to take the risk. That's how serious I am. I want this game so badly. I love freaking zombies. I'm, yeah, I'm a Halo fan, but zombies? Oh, now you heard me say already, I won't buy the next-gen console systems because they're full of bugs. But man, for this game right here, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to take the risk and get it. If they bring it only for next-gen systems only, I'm buying the next-gen system. Oops, sorry, it's not supposed to be something I'm watching later. <laughs> but yeah, I'm buying a next-gen system. Just for that game by itself. I'll buy two of them. One for a backup and one just gets the other one goes down. That's how badly I want this game. And I can't wait to get my hands on it. So I'm starting clan matches to get as many people on as possible because it's an all-out free-for-all. Everybody gets together and they just go out and rumble. But check out, if you get a chance, check out the link. Check it out on YouTube. It's called Back for Blood. I'm telling you, man, if you're a huge zombie fan, you're a huge fan of Left 4 Dead. And mind you, fact, the makers of Left 4 Dead, Val, are responsible for actually that game itself. So right here, I'm just showing you real quick. This right here is the new um, 9. Well, actually, the 9 actually converted to a 12. This is that technology we're using right now. So now nines are nines anymore. It's actually Ambulite Rejection 12. They have 12 technology. See the water reflecting off the top from here to here? Now watch this. You can use it, since it has 12 technology embedded into it, you can actually use it in fully lit environments with the windows open. And you can pick up an image with no problem whatsoever. And this is darker technology. You can actually see the water rip one right over top. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the demonstration. I'd also like to thank you all for your time. This fellow right here. Chief, you have a good one. You know, let me tell you something. It'd be kind of cool if they made, and I know you don't like zombies, but it'd be kind of cool if they made a zombie version of Halo. That'd be kind of cool. You know what, okay, you know what I really would like? The ultimate zombie game right now? The ultimate zombie game. They should make, they should make a Grand Theft Auto. I know they did left it, left it, what do you call Thank you so much, thank you so much, man. You have, you have a wonderful, 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 wonderful. A wonderful um, uh, um, um, holiday, man. But I'm gonna tell you something. They did, they did. Red Dead Redemption had a zombie version of it, but I ain't like, I'm not a big fan of the Red Dead Redemption series. It's just mess, just me. But imagine if they made a Grand Theft Auto zombie version, like all zombies, and you're and you had to basically get. Oh, that tell me that wouldn't be amazing? Cause the map is huge, and you got hordes. You got beyond hordes, because that city is filled with people. So imagine all those people being zombies. You got to—they got to give you new weapons. 
You can go to team mode. You, know, you can do eight players. All eight players have to survive. And you got to go from, from destination to destination. So within that one city, you'll have like four different safe houses that you have to get to. So you can go by boat. You can go by sea. You can actually modify your, your, um, your, your boats and stuff like that with weapons and stuff like that. You know, this is stuff. It'll be pretty cool. I mean, think about it. You know what I mean? I would love to do a Grand Theft Auto Zombie Edition. That would be freaking cool. And they gotta bring in, they gotta bring in hazards, man. They gotta bring in hazards. You gotta have changing of weather, you know what I mean? You gotta have freaking like rainstorms, you gotta have freaking, I mean, heavy rainstorms, thunderstorms, tornadoes, weird, wacky weather effects, because this is the apocalypse. You know what I mean? The weather's not even right. And they, please, please, for goodness sakes, bring in dogs, man. Bring in wild, vicious dogs and large animals and stuff like that. Yeah, combination with bu building your shelters. That's what I'm talking about, man. Freaking rock star needs to listen up, man. So many people with mod vehicles too. Yeah, because the same mod we can mod vehicles. Yeah, you can do it in zombie mode. And they got to make the AI freaking crazy freaking smart, man. Like you got to really think and you got to really strategize on how you're going to do something. You know what I mean? That's what they should be doing, man. And man, fill that ocean, man, with some really freaking psychotic stuff, man. Some really weird psychotic, psychotic stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. You remember, you remember on freaking, uh, you played uh, Gears of War, where they had them hordes of bats or whatever the freak those things were that would strip the flesh off your bones? Those things terrified the daylights out of me, man. They need to bring in something like that. That freaking thing was amazing. All right, look, I'm going to go real quick because I can be on here talking forever about gaming. Dude, you have a real a good one, man. You have a smart one. Um, I'm a smart one. <laughs> have a good one, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Thank you all for your time, and God bless.